Welcome back to the Flying Lion Podcast, everyone. I'm here tonight with Sam, who is rocking a Brazil jersey while I'm rocking a U.S. jersey for those listening on Spotify. We didn't uh, intend to do this, but here we are, Sam. How are you doing tonight? Doing pretty good. You know, like you said, we got the two national teams going against each other. Um, I don't know if Brazil and the U.S. men's national team have ever played i'm guessing they have but it's probably been like 10 12 plus years i'm guessing maybe even 20 um but yeah doing pretty good um we've got two fc games coming up this week which should be fun to talk about here at the end of the episode but um got a good one um in in philly to talk about absolutely sam i think to be honest with you you referenced the last time the u.s played brazil i'm pretty sure that was in philadelphia was that like 10? How how long ago was it? I think it had to have been at least 10, but I'm pretty sure there's a photo of Neymar playing against the U.S. So a maybe someone Neymar. can fact check you know, us on that. But kind of special that we both showed up in that. We both had it down, so I kind of like that. But as San has uh, referenced, you know, FC Cincinnati comes off their international break. They go to Philly on the road. We take on a solid team that had been rising and I think were unbeaten in their last uh, five home games. Mm-hmm. So it was a very tough test. Um, but overall, you know, I'm, I'm happy with the result. We end up tying, you know, 2-2. Um, but we got a lot to uh, kind of talk about, you know, from this game. It was uh, really interesting from even before the game to the beginning of the game. And then all the way through the second half was much better as a FC Cincinnati fan as well. Yeah, kind of to to touch on, you know, the, the pregame, obviously no Lucho for us and they're missing a, a key piece as well. Um, I think that their head coach had talked about it um, in the couple days before, you know, the game and their presser just saying like, hey, like we're both without these guys because of stupid yellow cards. Um, and so, you know, he, I'm, I'm glad he kind of dug in a little bit uh, into the MLS rather than, you know, trying to make this thing kind of a rivalry almost because Pat's a former, you know, union guy, but he's always shown respect to FC Um, shout out to him. Um, But yeah, as far as the lineup goes, um, Kubo slots in for Acosta for us, which, you know, we were debating, you know, what kind of lineup was Pat going to bring out? This was kind of the one that makes the most sense Um, just to slot Kubo into probably one of the positions he's probably most familiar with and has played the most in not only with us in the MLS, but also in Europe. Yeah, good shout, especially for knowing that Lucho is going to be out. I think that was one of my talking points and not to get too far ahead into the lineup, but the other talking point going into it was, you know, would the guys from the international break be ready and come back and play? Um, so as we talked about in the last episode, Arias was out, Mourinho was out, um, and then uh, Bupenza was also playing for Gabon. So uh, kind of interesting to hear about the fact that uh, Bupenza ends up getting to Philadelphia at, you know, like one o'clock uh, the same day as the game. Uh, so very happy that he ended up playing. He made Team of the Week, spoiler alert on that, but um, pretty cool, you know, that he finally made it back no matter how he made it there, you know, and back, but uh, just happy to see him, you know, get in some minutes. So as Sam had mentioned, um, we talked about Kubo a little bit. Let's kind of run through the rest of the lineup. We had Roman Salentano in goal. No surprise there. We had Alvaro Barrial at left back. Uh, we had Mascara back first start since I think, uh, you know, League's Cup or actually prior to League's Cup, I think, Sam, would you correct me on that? I'm pretty sure. I think it's been. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, it was like the game before. Yeah. Yeah, like the Nashville game, I'm pretty sure. So Mm -hmm. he had been kind of coming off of an injury. Um, We had Miazga, a heated Miazga in this game. And then uh, Nick Haglin and Arias rounds out, you know, the back line. So then we go into the midfield with our traditional Wobodo. We had Mourinho. Kubo slides in there and actually plays a pretty serviceable game. So we have a lot to kind of talk about with him. And then up top with uh, Aaron Bupenza, just kidding. (laughs) Sergio Santos. I wish it was Bupenza, but it was Sergio Santos and it was Vasquez up top to start. Um, I I think personally, I would have, I said Bupenza, I would have loved to see Baji, but I don't think he was quite ready. He was coming off. wasn't fit. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we'll kind of get into it here in the first 15, 20 minutes of the game, Sam, I felt like we did pretty dang solid. We actually came out with a lot of fight in us. Um, I think 
There was a decent chance early on by Santos. Vasquez had a shot from outside the box as well. Um, so early on, we tried to, I think, establish a little bit more of a possession-based game and take it to them. Um, they know how it's kind of been in the last, I would say, probably about a month when we've gone down first. Um, so they really wanted to try to dictate things. It didn't end up going that way, but at least the first 20 minutes were promising. Yeah, I, I will say that the highlights, you know, for those people that just watch the highlights or, you know, miss this game, the highlights don't do us justice within the first 15 minutes, um, you know, because, you know, credit to Ryan, you know, telling us, you know, how many chances we actually did have. Vasquez had a chance. Santos had a chance. We were moving the ball pretty well, um, especially in away territory in Philadelphia um, against kind of a, a team that had brought it to us the last time we played them. Right. Um, and kind of like to play. Um, kind of almost that counterattacking style where they can drop deep a little bit. Um, so it was nice to see that aggressive um kind of attack that we had. But yeah, to your point, it just <laughs> we we want to to get ahead in that first half, and it's just doesn't seem like we want to do that. Yeah, I I mean, I think the intention was there, and like I said, they created chances. Now personally and watching this game and I'm sure for those who were actually in attendance there can kind of attest to it I mean everyone knew how big of a game this was Philly oh, had yeah. come in with so many games in a row that they had won for those who aren't familiar um, and then you know us being at the top of the league you know everyone's kind of gunning for us so they also hadn't played in you know two weeks so kind of interesting you come into this game you have all of this built up you know Philly's got a sold out crowd uh, and to be honest with you, like it just turned into a card fest, you know, right even early on. And there's a lot of dark arts that go on during this game. You know, Miazga, I think, is probably the most heated I've ever seen him. Um, and he was our We've said that a lot this year. <laughs> oh, but I think this takes it to another level. <laughs> I mean, he was over guys yelling at him. He was yelling at the ref. Him and uh, I think it was uh, Carranza, wasn't it? I think their striker had gotten into it several different times in the first 15, 20 minutes of the game. Um, so I would say for the first half in general, we needed to keep a little bit better composure. Um, and, you know, maybe Miazga being our captain in this game kind of leads the whole team down that path a little bit more. And they just kind of lose focus. And, um, you know, I would say, to be honest with you, Miazga's worst half of the whole season. Yeah, I mean we can we can kind of go ahead and get into it, but the uh first goal right off the bat, um 23rd minute, Philadelphia Union um puts them up 1-0. Um I just think on this goal there's a little bit of, you know, kind of the ball's kind of getting dinked around, passed around, um falls to the Union and I I just once again it's one of those things where if you pause, you know, either the live feed or the highlights, whichever one you watched, you could see how much our defense dropped. Um, you, you see Barrial is not tracking back on the other side. So that forces Moreno to have to drop back and play more of that left center back, almost left back role. And then he's not able to cover the midfield there. And unfortunately, I mean, credit to union. Like, I mean, that was a, a heck of a ball, heck of a strike. Um, I think personally, I think Miazga needs to do better of stepping there. Um, I mean, Mascara maybe as well, but yeah, Miazga steps and doesn't try and put a foot on it or anything, just tries to get a body on it. And it's, it's kind of a, a poor attempt in my, in my, in my opinion. He was a foot too late. Now, yeah. as you reference, the ball kind of gets pinged around. They kind of go on a quick counter attack, but we get out of sorts as you're yeah. kind of referring to. And I think you make a good point. Mourinho has to cover more ground, probably covering Barrial's side as he got pushed up high. And we mm -hmm. saw a little bit with Arias as well. So they kind of attack down that left side. We get two guys that are drawn in. And I don't know why this game, Miazga felt like him and Carranza had to like be like at it at all moments. But he gets pulled into that space, which allows for Jose Martinez to have more time, like Sam was referring to, to take a shot where, you know, we've seen him just hit bangers this year from outside the box. Uh, I think his FIFA stat for long shots got to be up there <laughs> defense and long shots for him. That's about it. Um, but yeah, I felt you were exactly right. Miazga was, you know, a foot too late. And by the time he realized it, 
I don't think he processed it enough to even get, you know, a foot out or anything. He actually puts his hands behind his back to try yeah. to yeah, yeah. not, you know, get a handball on it, but it's too little too late. So yeah, exactly on all those points on the fact that, you know, we build this up for 20 minutes and then kind of just kills the momentum to be honest with you. Yeah. Especially with a long strike like that. I mean, it really takes the wind out of your sails when it's almost too easy for them from outside the box. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, you go from that to, I think it was not even, you know, another five, 10 minutes after that where go ahead, Sam. No, no. Yeah. Sorry. Finish. finish. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say five, 10 minutes after that. I mean, we just kind of lose our focus again. And it again is Miazga where he's trying to hold a high line, doesn't realize where he's at ball gets played behind. And I don't know if they had shown this kind of on the highlights for those who again, didn't get to watch this, but I thought for sure the union player was offside. This ball gets played over the top. This guy is well beyond the back line. And all of a sudden you see Roman come out on a one-on-one and I'm just waiting. Okay. Even if something happens with the goalkeeper, yeah. they're going to blow it back. You know, we're going to get a, a card up or, or sorry, the flag up. And uh, yeah, we don't, we don't get anything. So yeah, on the, on the replays, like they didn't, they didn't really show any type of like good camera angle to where yeah. we could see it and be like, Oh, it was this, you know, he was onside by this much or right. he was offside by this much. Right. That, I, he was on, he's clearly on. And oh no, yeah, he's clearly on, but I'm on, saying but... like, there wasn't a camera angle that was like, yeah. For us to even question it. Sure. Right. Um. So, I mean, once again, I, I think it was the defenders that they assumed, they just assumed like all of us right. that, Oh, like he, he must've been offside because they're not moving. And he has a one-on-one with the goalkeeper. And I mean, that was a clear and obvious penalty. Not much Celentano can do right. with that. So um, Roman comes out. He tries to make something out of this situation. I, I I don't know if like anyone's kind of put this out there or even asked Roman, but I felt like maybe he thought he was offside and just was kind of coming out. He looked like he was playing it like in real time. But is yeah. there any thought in his mind like, hey, this might be called back for offside? I think you got to finish the play in this day and age in the MLS. Oh, you yeah, got, absolutely. You but I mean, if anybody's, anybody's going to finish the play, it's going to be the keeper, though, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just unfortunate to see. And then, you know, it leads to a penalty. And, man, Celentano almost had his first MLS penalty save. Um, guessed yeah. right. Can you say that one more time? Still has not saved a single PK. Yeah, for as many clean sheets as he has. Hold on. This year, last year, he had two. He had two last year he saved, I remember, against uh, Real Salt Lake and NYCFC. And I know that for a fact. I'm pretty sure he saved two. This year, he hasn't saved one. Yeah. Yeah. But Khan has, or Can has, I should say. Yeah, Yeah, that was Red Bulls. Yeah. So in the Open Cup, I think he did. So we go on from this um, PK to, you know, we almost get another one scored on us. It's kind of yeah. a sloppy play in the box off a corner. Roman's going to ground again, and the Union almost put one in and could have been easily 3-0 at that point and running away with the game. But um, we uh, we kind of see that end of that half out. I think even by the end of the first half, there's how many fouls, how many yellow cards already Seriously. at that point. Um, so you know, Pat's got to make some decisions and I think we can kind of get into it at halftime. Um, you know, Hagelin's on a yellow. We got to pull him out. We put Murphy in um, and then, you know, happy to see Bupenza coming in at half and Santos comes out. I didn't feel like besides his one chance early on in the first half, Santos didn't really do much for me. Um, so I, I thought it was a good move by Pat just to bring some energy in. And honestly, like right away, you could, see it you could see that they were gelling better um i don't know what it is still about bupenza playing without lucho um i had kind of seen i guess through some of his highlights the fact that he likes to be on the ball and kind of occupy space behind the top striker so maybe this allowed for a little bit more of it um but it was kind of cool to see even you know in the first how many minutes of the half? I think it was the 48th minute, right? Where awesome yeah, yeah, play for, happens. Yeah, yeah. So let's, if you want to, go ahead and kind of walk me through what you saw. Yeah. So obviously there's some great play that happens in the buildup of this goal. 
Um, Vasquez, first of all, I want to give all credit to him. What a ball. Um, draws two defenders and plays a great ball to Kubo. Kubo's able to run onto it. It was just like a little, it was a little poke as well. And it was like perfectly timed, just gets onto Kubo's feet. Kubo takes it a little too far, in my opinion, like almost yeah. to the end line where it's like, pass it, pass it, pass it, do shoot it, do something. Yeah. Um, but he ends up passing it, making the right decision to Bupenza um, right in front of the goal um, for a nice, easy finish. Great to see that type of play um, right out of halftime as well. Um, felt I think like Pat lit a fire underneath him and was like, I was about to say, it felt like something was talked about, um, you know, that really encouraged that kind of, um, it wasn't really tiki taka, but it was very much like one, two style play. Yeah. Going back to last episode, I think that's a good point on that. I don't know if it was like a quicker tempo that they saw, but mm -hmm. again, going back to last, last episode, I talked about the first time we played the union, they played a higher line. Zach and I kind of referenced that they played the game within about 20 or 30 yards. Um, I think in the first half, you saw some glimpses that we tried to get behind and we don't really have, you know, to be honest, the best player in the MLS for through balls, Lucho. Yeah. Um, so you have to kind of find a way to still break behind the line. And for that goal, and even honestly for the second goal, you see opportunities where you catch them where they're a little bit higher up and you have space behind. You get a quick ball centered into the middle and you score. So, I mean, again, that's been us all season, but – we, uh, you know, awesomely, I think, took advantage of these situations, even without Lucho, uh, for that to happen. So good shout on that. Um, about two minutes later, after Bupenza scores, he gets called offside for a goal that he actually puts in. Um, I felt like it was a very, very close call. And uh, it's something that was a little bit underrated in the match at that point, because it's a 2-1 game. You know, we're still down, but we have all of this momentum after that goal. Um, I, I would like to go back and kind of see that one again, but it seemed very close to me. Yeah. It, it seemed like one of those where it was like, all right, offside, like keep a move. And it was like, wait, hold on, wait, hold on, hold on a second. Yeah. Like, can we please get a closer look at that? Um, it seems like every single time, like I feel like Bupens has had like two or three of those so far this season right. to where he's barely offside and, he he finishes it and it's not called until obviously he finishes and it's like well okay can we can we at least you know look at it like just just to give it a an extra look something his one against Miami I think is the one you're referencing yeah. early on and then he's hit the post I would imagine two or three times now as well um so I mean he builds his confidence if you come into that half and you score right away like you're gonna be ready to just go Oh yeah. Um, so I, I thought that was cool to see. Um, and we kind of took advantage of it from that point on. So 50th minute, you know, through another 15 minutes there where we're kind of trying to create more chances. I think Philly has a couple back and forth again, more than anything, it's just more fouls, tons of fouls. Yeah. Just more fouls. <laughs> How in many times did you see the game just being stopped? I mean, so this game, you know, overall ends up with 43 fouls which I can't find a stat for it anywhere, but I think it has to be up there for most fouls in the history of a single game. Um, you know, there ends up being 10 yellow cards, two red cards, you know, converted yellows to reds. So um, just so scrappy two teams that like are basically the same style. You know, I mean, we had our guys, you know, Pat Noonan kind of came from, you know, Philadelphia, Chris Albright came from Philly we're adapting this system and, you know, now Philly's doing a very similar thing. So two identical looks, but um, just scrapping it out, man, just back and forth. And to be honest with you, I think some of it has to be with the fact that we've had the upper hand against them in the past two seasons. Um, yeah. I mean, we haven't I lost think... to them since the playoffs last year, but in the MLS regular season, we've had two wins and two ties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To your point, I think we brought it to them. Right. And us sitting at the top of the table where they feel they should be, especially after, you know, like you said, being unbeaten um, five straight home games. Um, you know, really, I think they came into this home game with something to kind of prove um, to say, hey, like, hey, we're we've 
been here for a while. We've been at the top for a while. Like, you know, let, let's give it to you. But to our credit, you know, we, we fought back this second half for some reason, we, we like to be a second half second team, half team in the second half of the season. So maybe yeah. it's the second halfness of what's going on here, but I don't know. Does your first half, I mean, the first half of the season, we would take a lead and would keep it. Yeah. But I don't know if there's built confidence that like we can play at this level with who, you know, no, no matter who it is on the road, playing in Philly to be able to come back like that is huge. I think I saw a stat that um, in 20 games, when Philadelphia has had the lead, they have not lost a game or tied a game at home. And that was the first time that a team had gotten a single result after Philly's gone up at half, especially being 2-0 up. Yeah. So credit to Pat for making those changes. I guess, you know, the next thing that happens, 76 minute, there's a ball that's played back from the uh, outside right back for Philadelphia, is played right to Bupens' foot, to be honest. He turns, takes about two strides, whips an immediate ball into the box. To be honest with you, Sam, I don't know if you remember the exact uh, buttons on FIFA, but what was the early cross buttons? Wasn't it like triple X or triple triple square or something like that? You'd hit early cross. I yeah. immediately like thought, oh, he hit early cross. <laughs> and he had uh, perfectly run you know, by Vasquez right there, was beating his guy. He gets a touch on it. The flex off the keeper, back off Vasquez and in, um, which is just kind of a wild finish. It could have gone anywhere off the deflection. But um, I just wanted to kind of shout out the early cross that, you know, FIFA, <laughs> you can use. And I felt like Bupenza put it perfectly right on his foot. Yeah, very weird mistake from, you know, the union. You, you normally never see that. They're very, you know, their ball control is pretty, pretty, pretty good, especially on that back line. But um, yeah, weird mistake. Um lands right in Bupenza's pens feet. Um, and to your point, insane vision to yeah. be able to, I, I don't even know, like he might even just taken like one look and then just passed it and hope for the best. I don't know, but what a, what a pass um, right to Vasquez and, you know, just another lucky bounce right off the defender's heel. Um, so but strikers goal right there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like a poacher. That's like a Brenner goal. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, at this point, Vasquez take anything. He's got six goals now in the MLS season, 18 in all competitions, including the international team playing with the United States. So yeah. um, good for him. I, I love to see him back on the score sheet for us, too. Um, I felt like those two kind of led the charge in the second half, especially. Um, and we'll get into that here in a little bit. But as we finish the game out, we kind of round it out. Um, we're kind of holding on, not for dear life a little bit, but like gets kind of rocky in the last 10 minutes of the game um, up into a point where Yerson Mascara goes in a little too aggressively on this Philly player and gets another yellow, gets a red card. Now he's out of the game. Now we're down a man. And I'm thinking, uh oh, here we go. This is a classic Cincinnati moment, you know, 2 2, 90th minute, we're down a man. What's going to happen with Philly at home? Um, I, I just feel like yerson has got to be a little bit smarter. I think maybe it's a little bit of a soft call. I think he does catch the guy's foot for yeah. sure. He does in real time. I think probably in s- slow-mo and when you look at it, like, I don't know. I could, I, I just think he needs to be smarter on a yellow card. You can't go into a guy's back like that. And no, and especially 2-2 two, two draw, um, right. you know, games kind of, in the balance, right? Well, and we swing the happen. momentum. Yeah, yeah. And then and you put your team you behind. That. It's a stupid challenge. It's yeah. a stupid challenge. And first of all, why why are you pressing the ball that high as a as a center back? Right. And and Wobodo's right there. If yeah. you drop back, and Wobodo's going to take the ball, like because it's not like they were pressing towards True. us, and you know had the attack. Like it was a ball that I think had been played or cleared or, or something yep. landed to the guy and he he's pressing as a center back, almost to midfield like that. It just, it's yeah. just it's you, foul. you see like right away, I've not seen a ton of this, but you see Vasquez come over right away after he commits the foul and was like, dude, why did you do that? Yeah. Like Vasquez, like we just scored, like we just have all this momentum and then you basically kind of kill our team in a way. Um, so I, I thought that was interesting. Vasquez was getting pretty heated into it. 
Uh, Miazga obviously showed it more than anyone on the field. Um, I'm surprised that he didn't end up with the red card. Would you prefer to lose Mascara or Miazga at this point? Kind of be my question. Mascara. Mascara. I mean, you don't want to lose your captain. Yeah, Um, 100%. Well, I mean, like even for the next game is kind of what I'm referring to as well. I think you, I feel, I still think the answer is the same. We've played without Mascara the last couple, you know, so um, interesting to see. So then we go on, we kind of hold things for a little bit and then (laughs) Philly's guy gets another yellow card so there's a bouncing ball that vasquez does pretty well to kind of shield the guy on philly's guy goes a little bit too aggressively to get the ball what's that so he just tackles him yeah i think it was uh jack elliott their center back so he goes in and um gets called for it and now you're down you know to 10 men and against 10 men which honestly like I don't I just noticed this is kind of funny that we're talking so much about yellow and red cards because you're wearing yellow and I'm wearing red right now. It's like absolutely like perfect, like chef's kiss. Amazing planning by us. We didn't even plan it. Um, But I, I mean, it went from Sam's yellow to my red on two different occasions there in the last 10 minutes. It could have been a lot more, but ends up being a 2-2 draw. We'll take it in the end. We get a point yeah. on the road. Towards the end of the season, when you really need to just get any points, like we've said all all year long, draw on the road, win at home. So yeah, I I, I once again weird ending to the match, but the two, the two takeaways, um, you know, after it's all said and done, first thing, nice to see Baji back on the field. Yeah, um, shout thought out to that him was great to you know Absolutely. bring him back, so that way you know we've got our depth going into the playoffs, um. And, you know, obviously sucks to have to not have Lucho this game, but um, now we don't have Mascara for the next game. So um, he's literally out after being back. So um, I'm hoping that maybe Saturday we get everybody on the field together. No injuries, no cards, nothing. But, you know, no problem. MLS, man. Wednesday. Yeah, that's the MLS, unfortunately. But. In the end, again, very happy um, with the result. As we kind of mentioned, Bupenza, you know, ends up being team of the match day. I'm glad that he even made it to Philadelphia. Um, but overall, again, we're, we're happy to get a draw out of that. It's hard to kind of like say that. And I think we actually both predict, predicted a draw. I forget exactly what your prediction was. Mine was one to one. Yours might have been two to Sam. I, I don't I don't. I think, it zero, zero. I think okay. I went now. No. Zach had predicted a loss, but um, for both of us, you know, at least we nailed the draw part of it. Yeah. So, um, Sam, I got a trivia question of the week kind of on brand with what we've been talking about here. So, yeah. Um, so for FC Cincinnati, who tops our history uh, for cards? So yellow or red cards or even combined. Now, a little bit of a side one on this part. Um, give me the top three players because I think the top one might be pretty obvious for those who are listening, but I think you'll be surprised by the the other two. Um, okay. Um, is it MLS only, right? We're going to go combined. This is for everything. Everything. Okay, USL well, and MLS. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to go um, OB with number one. I think okay. he's had the most. Um I, in in no specific order for two and three, I'm gonna go. Acosta's got to be one of them, and then um, I'm trying to think who's been out like a decent amount or has gotten cards. Um, let's go with uh, Vasquez. Oh. With Vasquez, okay, so. Yeah. Tune in towards the end of the episode here. We're going to give you this answer again. Very interesting to kind of see, um, you know, for our team, I think we've had a few suspensions this year, more than I can kind of remember in past seasons as well, yeah. um, which has kind of been unfortunate because if you're not killing yourself on injuries, like don't kill yourself on like discipline. <laughs> and I don't know necessarily, we can kind of get into this maybe on the second half of the break, but yeah, we will. Um, I was just going to kind of touch on, do you think that's a coaching thing in some aspects? So that's something to kind of ponder here. We'll, we'll chat about it more at the flip side of the break. So we'll see you back here in a minute. So agility is a technology driven soccer training facility. So we offer six facets of training. 
Uh, that would be Tech Touch uh, with ball launchers that work on your first touch, the TSZ, uh, which is the ESA equipment and working on decision making. We also have a circuit. Uh, circuit training would be taking the ESA equipment to the next level. It's kind of like a soccer obstacle course. Then we offer neuroscience training with our reflection tools, uh, working on processing things a little bit faster, hand eye coordination and such. Uh, we offer skills classes, which is your typical core verge skills training. Um, lots of people still enjoy that, so we work on a lot of attacking 1v1 skills. And then we also offer athlete development. So our athletes come here and they work on speed, agility, uh, quickness, explosive movements, really just learning how to move and function a little bit better as an athlete. Welcome back, everyone. So now that we've all had kind of a minute to ponder this question I posed at the end of the half or half at the end of the, <laughs> the first part of that. Well, I guess our half. Yes, it yeah. was our half. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I asked Sam, besides the trivia question, um, I was curious if you think it's a coaching thing on kind of this discipline um, issue, if you want to call it, uh, for this season compared to the past seasons. We've had a little bit more animation in our players this year, maybe a little bit of a longer leash in some ways. But I don't know. I'm curious to kind of see what you think. Yeah, I mean, I think part of it is coaching. I think. Pat wanting to have our defense kind of be assertive um, and, and kind of put that foot forward to not be a defense that's trifled with. Um, unfortunately, that may lead to a lot more fouls or a lot more yellows than, you know, we'd like to see. However, I'd rather us be aggressive than not aggressive. Um, sure. And on top of it, I, I think that is just the way that the game is being refed right now. Um, and, I, I think if you watch every single post game with any coach in the MLS, I, I think they talk about it almost every game, if not every other game, um, just because I, I think, once again, it's a trend um, that a lot of the refs seem to be kind of foul happy or card happy, and it, it doesn't really um, discriminate when it comes to, to whose game it, it is, right? Um, it could be except it's messy you know, except it, it, when it's messy yeah, i guess unless it is messy <laughs> you know pushing a guy blatantly in front of a ref is what it is but um even if it is east coast west coast i really don't think it, it matters this season yeah for sure that's a good shout um the way that they've been calling it especially on obi this year has been interesting to me because they've had a full year to kind of see him and the way he plays but he's still getting calls or, you know, yellows that I think kind of are somewhat questionable. Now that's the way Obi plays. Now that's, yeah. that's yeah. one way to get a card. Now I'm talking more of like descent, like Miazga dead ball situation, you know, hits a guy and they review it for a red card and ends up being a yellow. But I mean, he hardly contacts the guy. It was a terrible call on what they had said, but Still, I I don't know if he's giving the players kind of this leash, like I said, that, hey, you're grown men, carry yourself on the field a certain way. But um, it's been interesting to to see that kind of unfold and a couple assets. I, you know, I, I think Mascara is another one who obviously embellishes a lot in what he does too, but um, maybe it's their background. Maybe it's what they're accustomed to. I think it has more to do with the players in some aspects too. So, yeah, I mean, since we did it last week, I might as well just go ahead and do it this week. We'll do cards of the week to start off. And okay. you know, that rolls right into mine. Um, my card of the week is just too many cards. I mean, that's very blatant. Um, so the ref, the head referee um, for this game was Ishmael uh, El Elfath. Um, 11th appearance in the MLS this season. He does a lot of international games as well, which is really cool. But um, this was his second FCC game. Out of those two FC games that he's refed, an average of 18 fouls a game in those games. It's the highest average for a team that he has refed. The second highest average, Philadelphia Union games. No um, way. <laughs> yeah. So I thought that was funny that the wow. two highest average you know, games of fouls are, you know, for him are union and FC. Um, so yeah. just ridiculous to have that amount of fouls, let alone cards as well in a single game. So just to kind of, you know, once again, add some statistics to what we've been saying the entire pod. It's a red and yellow 
card kind of week, man. Um, that's very interesting. Do you know what his other game was that he ref, you know, for us earlier this year? Or I don't. I didn't okay. look that far, but I, I just saw say, two, and I was like eighteen I, out of two. Like that's, that's that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's like per team is what you mean. Yeah. Wow. So I think I mean I was trying to think back. Nashville obviously had many cards in it. Um, the crew games always kind of heated the one at home at least kind of was, um, mm-hmm. so I don't, I don't know if it was the Nashville game, maybe possibly. I don't, I don't quite remember, but that's very interesting. Interesting set. So the, the last FC Cincinnati game that he refed, funny enough, it was the, um, Orlando city FC Cincinnati nil hmm. nil match, um, back in May. And that game only had okay. two yellow cards, but it it had I don't know how many fouls. lots of fouls. Yeah, huh? He was trying to keep a tighter leash. Um, I think I don't know. He he had done the Messi game I think the week prior, or no, it was the Inter Miami game, but Messi didn't play. That's what it was. And there was a kind of a controversial call with uh, Busquez, who plays this ball in for a goal actually, off mm-hmm. of a dead ball situation where. It, Busquez kind of smartly just plays it right away and the ref allows it, which was kind of a questionable thing if that was allowed. And I think it is ref dependent on some of them will allow them to play quickly, set the ball down and go. Other times they want to dictate like, this is my game. You play when I tell you to play. And I I don't personally like that as a player. Like I don't want to be shown like the ref dictates everything. You know what I mean? Like I want to be able to kind of have more of a free flow and like, we don't need to hold the ball up unless the player's in front of it on a foul that's at the mid yard, you know, like at, at midfield. So yeah, that's my personal take. But um, <laughs> my card of the week, are you ready for this? Hit me. My card of the week was actually a Montreal player. His name is Malko uh, Miljevic and former uh, CF Montreal guy. And this is kind of relevant because we end up playing them on Wednesday. Um, yep. This guy, Sam, gets so kind of fed up with his MLS team that he goes and plays in an amateur league game and kind of on brand with our episode throws a punch in the game and gets kicked out of this amateur game. And then now is kicked off of the MLS team too. (laughs) So does that mean he has to serve a one game suspension in the amateur league before he can play again with the amateur team? (laughs) I, I I would say he's out of that amateur league. Um, but if I'm not mis- did did he go? I can't remember the report. Did he go under a fake name? He did go under a fake did name. Go under, yes. Yeah. I think the name was Led Tasso. Just kidding. <laughs> Rumor has it. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing if it was like, especially in Canada, if it was like some American name? <laughs> so funny. Yeah. I just thought that was wild. That was probably the wildest story I've heard, like outside of the like MLS. I don't know. It was crazy. Very, very much one of those stories where it's like, yep. I mean, that's the MLS for you. I mean, yeah. and I mean, and all we're talking about though, I mean, we can kind of talk about our like experience with soccer, but me and you kind of have this FIFA history. And all of your time of playing FIFA, have you had so many yellow cards in a game? Dude, I I don't even think purposely just die like trying to slide tackle a players. I don't oh, think, yeah. you know, it's gotten up there. Um, but I mean, unless once again you're you're purposely trying to, you know, if you're I don't know, maybe if you're a streamer out there trying to see, hey, how many red cards can I get within you know the first twenty minutes of the game or something? But that's, that's what to... it kind of felt like from a referee standpoint. It was like, how many yellow cards can right. I give out? Right now. I don't even know if this is a thing is like, what's the minimum that you can play with? I think it, I want to say it's like seven, like is seven, seven? Or eight. Yeah. Do you think the game would cut you off? Like you just lose the game. If you have six players on the field. I think you just play the rest of the game because Why? you run out of subs or no, no. Yeah. I think you would just play the rest of the game with six or seven guys. Maybe one of our listeners can let us know and yeah, comment. Know yeah, comment. That would be yeah, that would be great. We're we're interested in that. Or maybe we need to go play the new uh, EAFC. 
EAFC uh, out now. Not, we're not sponsored. By <laughs> not sponsored. Right. Yeah, not out, sponsor. out now. Um, <laughs> so uh, let's move on, Sam. What was your jersey swap of the week? Yeah, jersey swap of the week. Um, you know, you got to go with Vasquez. Um, the man has been on fire as of late. I really liked the play that I've seen from him. Um, he has now scored in three of his last five matches across all competitions. Um, and is his second goal over his last three MLS regular season appearances. So um, not only did he have that key pass that led to, you know, a goal, but then, you know, I guess you could give him somewhat of a goal to tie <laughs> the match there. Um, but yeah, I, I just thought he played really well up top. And to your point, I think he's been learning and watching and him being a part of this team, watching Acosta, how he plays those through balls and it is able to kind of, drop back, see the field as it is. I feel like it's kind of helped our strikers um, and kind of players around a call seat. Once again, he just makes the guys around him better. And so I, I credit that to, you know, Vasquez being able to learn and kind of adapt without Acosta being able to be that person to lead something to the, to the goal. Yeah. I mean, great point. Cause how many games have they played together? They have all this built chemistry, but mm -hmm. you, you slot in Lu or uh, Kubo, Kubo there yeah. and, you know, they also seem to have kind of good energy between each other. And maybe that comes from the fact that they had played together for several games now up top when we've kind of needed to rely on Kubo while a couple of the strikers were out. So good shout. I kind of like that they had incorporated Vasquez more into this game. It seemed like to me, I wanted yeah, to get a lot more touches. Yeah. I, I don't know if we have a stat on that, but definitely had more touches this game. I wanted to kind of shout him out for, uh, late on in the game, Obi actually has a really good chance where he puts a shot on goal. Uh, if he slots it down to the bottom left, it would have been a goal. He kind of goes at the keeper to the right on the front post and Blake Mays makes a good save on it. But Vasquez actually has a really good open run. And I think his runs are actually like underrated in a lot of ways. Like he separates himself in the box and gets open, but he throws his hands up because he is wide open. And I would be frustrated too, as a striker, when you find yourself with that much space and you don't get the ball in there. Um, but I, I feel like that happens for a lot of teams. Yeah. Yeah. Who Who is your Jersey swap? Man, shocker on this one, but uh, Aaron Bupenza, um, I think this is my first time that I've shouted him out for my Jersey swap. Um, did a great job in 43 minutes. He kind of interestingly got subbed on at half and then taken off at the very end. Um, he uh, actually was the one that was sacrificed because we needed another defender. So Alvis Powell had come on, but Bupenza scores a goal. He has an assist, um, makes the match day team. Um, I, I thought that he did a really good job up top. And like we had talked about earlier on in the pod without Lucho, um, hopefully this will continue to build his confidence. We need a healthy and very interested Aaron Rupenza for the last several games. Um, obviously he spent his time over in Gabon with his family as a part of his international break with his team as well. Um, Sounds like FC Cincinnati kind of knew that he was going to be a little bit longer over there with everything that was going on, but I hope that his head is right. And I think this will kind of help with that too. Um, but I, I love to see that in kind of honorable mention for Bupenza. He is the second highest rated player on FC Cincinnati and EAFC. Uh, I believe so. Right. Isn't that correct? Yeah. 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 So Lucho 76, 76. 77. Yep. Yeah. And might be tied with Vasquez. Um, I'm pretty sure for the rating Vasquez 76 as well. I think, I think he might've been so, um, but Pupenza is, uh, hopefully on something now and we'll continue to show it in the next couple games. Yeah. So I think that's a pretty good wrap on the Philly game. I would say we've covered a lot of that and obviously a lot of the, the scrappiness of this game, but, um, going into this, go ahead, Sam. Yeah, real real quick. Um, you know, I know sometimes we like to slot in a possible, you know, FCC two shout or a possible kind of um upcoming player or something like that in between here. But um I did want to shout out the fact that um Isaiah Foster joins Colorado switchbacks on loan today. Um it was just announced. Um they currently are their USL championship team currently sits sixth 
and um, needed some depth um, on that back line, um, kind of on that wing. Um, so shout out to him to kind of getting more playing time. I know we had mentioned a, a little bit earlier in a couple podcasts where, um, you know, it seemed like he he had made, I want to say like one or two appearances. And it he had seemed one like appearance he was, for the yeah. U.S. Open Cup. Yeah, and he was going to be somewhat of kind of like how Halsey's become, right? Um, and so, you know, him not getting as much playing time, obviously Halsey's been playing really, really good. Um, it, it's nice to see that, you know, somebody will, will take him, give him some appearances, so that way he comes back to the team with more confidence. This is the team that we got him from, so there's a lot of familiarity with that as well as they kind of push for postseason run, I think, as Sam refers to. Um their season for FCC two ends this coming weekend. So it's a good opportunity, like you said, to develop him as we go on to the next couple of seasons. We'll see if he kind of pans out. Seems like Halsey seems to be ahead of him right now yeah. in the depth, at least at left back, but uh, maybe Halsey can switch to the right. Like we've seen him start, you know, earlier, uh, I think against Atlanta this year. So um, yeah, good for him. Good shout. I kind of like that as a, a special person to look out for. Mm -hmm. um, I think we can transition now, kind of a preview for our next two games. As Sam mentioned earlier, we have a game against Montreal this coming Wednesday. Um, Montreal has not been great this year, but seems to have kind of found ups and downs, different times where they all of a sudden want to be good, other times where their players play in amateur leagues and punch people. But um, <laughs> seems to be an up and down year for them. But uh, we're playing on the road again a, kind of a tough test going to another country in that sense. Um, but I, I'm hoping that we can really pull out three points, to be honest with you, because this seems to be over the next several games, a big opportunity for us, to be honest, to get three points. Yeah. The the last matchup was at TQL stadium earlier this season um, with was a three Oh win for us. Um, first goal of the game was that own goal in the second minute. So that helped out, and I believe Lucho and then Vasquez um, capped it off for us. And I think all three goals were in the first half. So um, if we can kind of have that same momentum going into this game, I think that would be great to kind of just get on the score sheet and, you know, um, get get a dub on the road. But um, Lucho will be back, which is great. But I think what will be interesting for me is to see how the back line looks. Obviously, Mascara is going to be out next game. Um, so do you just slot Murphy in um, and then you'll have kind of a Barrial, Murphy, Miazga, Haglin, and then Arias or whoever you want to slot in on the right side. Um, and it'll be interesting to see since there is two games in four days, do we get two different kinds of lineups? Sure. Um, how does, how does that look as a, you know, a full team sheet um, for, for both games? I'm very interested to see. Yeah, good shout. And I think this kind of goes into the MLS scheduling and playing two games, you know, during a week, you've had a little bit more of a rest now. So some of the guys have maybe a little bit more legs underneath them, but you make a good point, especially in the back line that might be thinner overall in terms of roster from top to bottom. Yeah. Um, so I, I think Arias plays in one full game and doesn't in the other. So either he starts in this Wednesday one or he starts in uh, the Saturday, but I don't think he plays the whole game. Um, will be interesting to see. I think Powell would be a good option for somebody to come in and play some solid minutes in the back. We've seen him do that uh, throughout the year. And some points, I don't think he's ready to play a full 90 back there. And in some ways he's actually had a pretty decent run at it. Um, I actually feel a little bit more confident about that than I did earlier on in the season <laughs> for sure. Um, I think everybody else stays pretty much the same. Maybe you see a younger guy like Angulo get more minutes because um, he didn't get to play in this past game, I don't think. Yeah. Um, and then uh, a healthy Dom Baji, man. I would love to yeah. see him. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's more of a Wednesday. Yeah, for sure. And I think yeah. Lupenza probably comes back and starts on Saturday, in my opinion. Yeah, I think so. I, I think – if if you're going to go with RS, you know, starting one game and then not starting the other, um, you had talked about Powell. You could throw in, I don't, I don't think Halsey would start a game, but um, you could throw Gaddis in to possibly start a, a 45 and mm -hmm. then come out at half. Um, yeah, I, I think we've got options because once again, guys are healthy, which is great. Right. Right. Um, and so not a bad thing to have different options, especially for a midweek and a weekend game. 
Yeah, dude. Look at like the fact now that we have Baji back, Santos is back, Bupenza's back, Kubo's there as an option behind Mourinho, and Gulo's there. We've had Pinto. He's yeah. built up this depth throughout the year that I think really benefits us down the stretch if we can stay healthy. We came out of Philly, I think, with one guy with a minor knock, but everyone else is pretty much healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think maybe Kimi is still out, but um, at this point, he's not really been playing too many minutes anyway. So, um, yeah, I, I feel good about Wednesday. I, I think you're right. This is a time to capitalize, and I think that Pat will – really really kind of encourage them to go after it uh in this game so i'm predicting a a 3-1 win uh for wednesday night's game against montreal i'm gonna go 2-0 2-0 all right yeah we'll move on then to a big saturday game charlotte is playing us at home um first game was not quite what we wanted for the first start of the game Mickey Mouse had an uh, honorable appearance in the game. Oh man, I was gonna, I was gonna touch on that. that <laughs> I knew you game. were, so I jumped, <laughs> I jumped you on it. But for those who aren't familiar, uh, I think there was an MLS announcer that made a call for their goal early on in the season. He just sounded like Mickey Mouse. It was just hilarious. Everyone needs to go check that out. Um, viral, viral YouTube clip. Yeah, it was pretty funny. But big game. Montreal's been showing up in some big moments. It seems like. In games they should win, they haven't seemed to quite do it. But in games where they need to get a result, they seem to be doing that. Um, If I remember correctly, we end up beating them at home last year, I think, like a 1-0 win, which was a pretty solid result for us considering earlier on in the season we didn't do well against them. Um, Pat seems to do a pretty good job at figuring out teams for the second time that we play them. That's a special shout that I wanted to say, especially in a game where – Again, against them, we didn't start off well and had to come back and end up getting a tie earlier on in the year. Montreal um, is a grass game. Um, And then obviously TQL is a grass game. But Charlotte is accustomed to playing on turf. So I think for us, that benefits us playing at home. Yeah, absolutely. Once again, it's going to be Battle of the Queen Cities. Um, Let's just show everyone that we're the superior queen city, um, not only as a city, but as a soccer team as well. So um, two good kind of matches um, that we should get dubs in uh, this week. Yeah, I, I full heartedly believe that the crowd's going to be great for Saturday. Um, it's been a little bit since we've had a home game and we kind of had a sour taste in our mouth from the Orlando game um, being the first home loss in MLS season. Then, uh, I think they're going to come back and play pretty inspired on Saturday, hopefully after a win on Wednesday as well, where we're building, man, we're building. So kind of touching on that here, we're still top of the supporter shield. So we have the most points in the MLS. We have an eight, eight point, point eight lead yeah. right now over Orlando, who's the second best. Now would be a great opportunity to kind of grab the bull by the horns and try. Yeah, absolutely. Just put it to bed. You know what I yeah. mean? So, um, I don't know if a record is quite there to make the record amount of points, which is 73. Uh, We sit at 58 right now, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah. So kind of will be interesting to see. I think we'd have to do like a 5-0 and 1 run to get to that point, Um, which, again, we have some tough teams after Charlotte. Um, But I I believe in our team. We got a lot of healthy people back, and why not now kind of start – going on a run again you know like we did earlier on in the year we had 12 unbeaten games in a row um now would be a good time to kind of build off of hey we played philly philly's been the upper echelon in the eastern conference um let's go get it yep this is our season let's go i think it was interesting i don't know if you caught this kai wagner uh the left back for philly had some very interesting comments after the game Go ahead. So I, yeah, I wanted, I was going to touch on that earlier, but I forgot. Um, Yeah. Very interesting thoughts. Um, And it's it's one of those things I was reading articles on it this past week, a couple of tweets as well that some of the MLS writers um, had been covering and the situation out in Philly for him is just, it's, it's really sad. It really is. And it, it talks to how manipulative the MLS salary cap is right now and how it needs to be adjusted um, because unfortunately they're not going to be able to keep their, you know, kind of 
all MLS or, you know, all-star of a player um, left back. And fortunately for us, we may need a new left back. So <laughs> that's, that's what, what I was, I was thinking. kind of commenting on, uh, yeah. on Twitter there that, yeah, I, I think he'd be a, a great fit for our team. Um, unfortunately, you know, once again, a key piece uh, lost by the union, but yeah, just a weird scenario where they just don't have the salary cap to pay him. And he has gotten offers and looks from Europe, from, you know, South America, from all these, you know, other big clubs um, and loves the city of Philly, wants to be there. It's just, they, they can't afford him. They right. just can't. And, you know, he, he did have something to say about it. Yeah. I mean, he let his voice be known on that. And I thought it was very interesting that he spoke up in the manner that he did, especially after kind of a tough draw that they just had and basically said, look, I love this place, but they don't seem to be invested in me. And yeah. I want to go somewhere where, you know, I'm appreciated uh, and paid. I mean, because to be honest, he's been the best left center or left uh, outside wing back until this year. And 20, he's on our team right now. 26 years old, 25. Yeah, 26. young player. Yeah. Um, I think uh, might have been German international at one yeah. point. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it would, it would be kind of cool to see. And obviously, I don't want Barrial to leave. He's the best this year, obviously, at that position. But would be a nice kind of fill in, especially because he's familiar with this formation and how we like to play up. Yeah, um, quality so, would remain the same. Absolutely. There would be no drop off. Um yeah, I, I I I like the idea of that, but we'll see what happens. I think that's an now, off season chat. Yeah, I like our guys. I like where we're at. Um, let's go get some wins this week. Sam, are you ready for our trivia answer? Yeah, let's go. So again, the question was, who tops FC Cincinnati history, both USL and MLS, in cards? So total amount of cards, yellow cards and red cards combined. Sam had locked in. I believe Wobodo mm -hmm. will be um, as number one. Number two, I think you had as Acosta. Mm -hmm. And three, I want to say, was Vasquez. Is that correct? Yeah, I didn't know who to slot in at three. Sam, you were two for three. Oh, hey. Hey, so, Vasquez was the wrong one. <laughs> yeah, kind of interesting. <laughs> OB tops, obviously, everyone knew that one. Uh, Acosta, yeah, I mean, he's been in more of these. I think probably he's, more he's Chirpin drawn. than anything. Yeah, for Chirpin. Um, and then Barial is actually Ooh. the third. Interesting. Yeah. Our next, um, I think, player that came from USL was Kenny Walker. He had the most cards. Oh, wow. So <laughs> kind of interesting. Kenny was only with us for like a year and a half, too. Yeah. Yep. So Dang. kind of uh, interesting episode, like we were touching on some scrappy game, you know, against Philadelphia. We're looking forward to two big games coming up. Any closing thoughts from you, Sam? No, let's let's just get two more dubs on the road to the supporter shield. Absolutely. And thanks again for everyone for tuning in. Please, uh, you know, go over to our Instagram page. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you know, swing over to Spotify as well. We got a lot of TikToks coming out. We got. We want to see. Content. We want to see the FIFA comments. We want to see what you we guys want to hear about, about the FIFA yep. comments for sure. Community. Maybe we'll get a special shout from uh, EAFC. That'd be kind of cool. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see Just you guys next week. Yeah, putting it out there. Thanks again for tuning in.